Hi, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to talk about ammonia. So ammonia is a really important thing to understand in aquaponic systems um, because it's one of the primary things that the fish are producing that's both toxic but also something that's, you know, kind of the beginning step um, in this chemical reaction that leads to our plants having proper nutrition. So um, there's a lot of misunderstandings out there about ammonia. So today I'm just going to talk really quickly, a little introductory thing about what, uh, what ammonia is and what ammonium is and uh, what they kind of do in the system. So in every system you have your fish and your fish are, are consuming protein and they're breaking this protein down inside their bodies. But there's also kind of this protein that's floating around in the water, right? Because they're not eating all of their feed or they're not digesting all of their feed. So as all of this excess feed just kind of floats around in the system, all this excess protein, it's broken down either in the gut of the fish uh, by the bacteria in the fish's gut or by uh, the bacteria in the system itself. It's going to grab that protein because there's a lot of energy, stored energy in it. They're gonna start breaking it down and um, using it for their own metabolism. So uh, what ends up happening is that protein gets broken down into simpler and simpler comp nitrogen containing compounds. And um, eventually what we end up with, once uh, some of these amino acids get broke down, is either ammonia or ammonium. Now in the fish, it's usually ammonium, um, and that is NH4+, uh, plus. and this is basically just, uh, you know, nitrogen and hydrogen, uh, but it's got a charge, okay? So if you guys think of all of these little, th all these little molecules floating around in the system like magnets, um, this particular molecule has a positive charge. What that means is that fish can use um, these essentially the, the, the cell membranes in their bodies and these other little proteins to, to move these things around because they have a charge. They can grab onto them, they can move them, they can exclude them from some certain parts of their body. Because uh, the fish can move this around, they can actually excrete this ammonium. So as they're pr processing the protein in their body, they're excreting this across their gills as they're breathing, or it's coming out in their feces um, as, they, uh, you know, as they're swimming around. Um, now this is this is not a terribly toxic substance in and of itself. Ammonium, okay, is not super toxic. Now it's still pretty toxic. You don't want to build up too high a concentration of this stuff, but it's not nearly as toxic as its buddy ammonia, okay, which is NH3. And you'll notice that ammonia does not have a charge. Because it doesn't have a charge, that's actually a pretty bad thing. It means that the cells cannot regulate where ammonia goes. And ammonia is a pretty toxic substance. So, if you have a lot of ammonia in your system, what that means is even as your fish are excreting ammonium, this ammonia is diffusing back across the gills and it's poisoning their cells. Um, that's not just true for the fish, that's true for the plants, it's true for the bacteria, it's true for a whole bunch of things in the system. So this is substance, ammonia, is, is very bad, very bad. We don't want this in our system at all, if we can help it. So, the nice thing is both of these things are oxidized into nitrites and then oxidized again into nitrates by the bacteria in our system. So we know that both of these are present and we know that they switch places a lot, depending on pH, depending on temperature, um, depending on a number of other system variables. So if we know that, we can design our systems and we can run them so that we have more ammonium than ammonia. Um, so to start doing that, we need to understand uh, when this is dominant, when this is dominant, what pH values kind of make ammonia the dominant species in our water, and what makes uh, ammonium uh, kind of the dominant molecule. So I'm gonna simplify this down. I'm gonna dumb it down a little bit and just talk about pH. Okay, we're gonna leave temperature out of it. We're gonna leave a lot of other things out. Um, but essentially, you know, if we kind of view, if we make a little graph here of our system pH, and this is, uh, let's, let's make this, uh, you know, four over here and 11 up here. Um, what we see is 
is uh, if we have, you know, a kind of a steady amount of ammonia in our system um, at a low pH, it's almost all um, ammonium, okay? And at a high pH, it's almost all ammonia. All right, so kind of right here um, in the middle, a uh, little bit higher pH, ammonia starts to predominate. And the reason is, is we know that uh, ammonium, right, this charged molecule, has an extra hydrogen on it. So um, as our water gets more acidic, we have more just kind of uh, hydrogen protons, uh, hydrogen ions floating around out there, hydronium ions, and they lead to us having a lot of ammonium. So having more acidic water means that we have the less toxic species in our water. Now as our pH goes up, you know, as it goes up above seven here, uh, we start to see a lot more ammonia. And by the time we hit about around pH eight, 50% of the ammonia, ammonium, 50% of this uh, interaction, it's about 50-50 at that point, essentially. So you got about 50% ammonia, 50% ammonium. And as you go up, that increases dramatically. At nine, you know, your ammonia is, is the dominant thing. There's hardly any ammonium left. So this is really important to understand. We want to keep our pH low, if we can, uh, so that our ammonium is the dominant species in our system. All right, so complicating this issue a little bit is the fact that a lot of people will show you that you're, if we are operating on pH still, um, a lot of the time at a lower pH, our oxidation efficiency or our, our uh, nitrification efficiency is a lot lower. So people will look at this and will say, oh, well, you know, we've got to run our pH higher so that our, our nitrification efficiency is a lot higher. You'll see that it kind of rises up the higher pH you get. This is true with fairly new systems. Now what you got to remember is that over time, so if this is a brand new system, a little bit later it would look like this, a little bit older it would look like this, a little bit older it would look something like that. So as the system gets a little bit older and you bring that pH down a little further and a little bit further and a little bit further, you can maintain good solid nitrification at lower pH values. And um, there's a whole bunch of literature out there that backs this up. There's a lot of people in aquaponics that say, oh, you always have to run your system at like pH 7. Uh, some of them are running at pH 8. Nonsense. You want to try and be shooting for 6, somewhere in that range. 6 to 6.4 is usually what I run uh, my systems at. So keep that in mind. Um, right off the bat, yes, having a higher pH is going to increase your nitrification efficiency and it means that this ammonia isn't going to last a whole, very long in the system. But as time goes on, it benefits you um, to run it at a lower pH, get that higher efficiency rate going. It usually takes six months or so, a year sometimes, to bring that pH down uh, to the point where that nitrification is efficient. But once you get there, it's really worth it. You're going to get rid of this ammonia and ammonium. It's not going to last long in the system at all. and um, before it's, before it's oxidized. And uh, you're gonna be running it at values that keep your nutrients really available to your plants and your nitrification, it's still, it's still gonna be fine. Then the next question is how do we bring ammonia down? Um, and again, it all comes back to either reducing the amount of nitrogen going into your system. So if you have an ammonia spike, you're gonna reduce feeding. If you have a dead fish in one of your tanks, do not feed that tank for a day or two you'll always see a little bit of a bump in your ammonia anytime you overfeed, anytime there's a dead fish, anytime something goes wrong. If you have chronic high ammonia and you've reduced your feeding, it means you got something dead somewhere in your system that is rotting. And um, essentially, you, you need to go through your system and clean it out at that point. Um, if you cannot get your ammonia down um, and you've got good nitrification, then yeah, you've got either a dead fish that's floated into a corner somewhere, or there's there's just a pile of rotten uh, feed somewhere. Clean it out. So that's that's one way you reduce the amount of nitrogen going into your system. The other way is you increase your your uh, nitrification efficiency. So you increase the rate at which your ammonia or ammonium is being oxidized 
and convert it into nitrites and then being converted into nitrates which the plants can then take up. In either case, even if you don't have plants taking it up, if you're cycling um, and you don't have plants in there yet, it is better to have uh, nitrogen as nitrate than as any as nitrite or as ammonia or ammonium. It's always better. Nitrate is very, very non-toxic to fish. You can run it very, you know, up to 160, 180 parts per million sometimes without seeing any ill effects um, on the fish. So you can you can run nitrates very high and your fish will be fine. Ammonia, ammonium, nitrites, any of those other ones, you bump up to about five parts per million on ammonia or and uh, you know you've got dead fish absolutely you probably got dead fish at two or three parts per million if your fish are kind of sensitive similarly with nitrites if you're hitting one two parts per million on nitrites uh, you're definitely in the danger zone so get your efficiency up okay that may mean starting your system at a little bit higher pH at the very beginning to get a little bit better nitrification but as your system ages you want to try and run your pH down um, lower to try and make your nutrients for your plants more available and I'll talk about that probably in another video but you want to uh, slowly get down there let your microbes adapt get them to the point where they're still really efficient at lower pHs and what you'll be doing is you'll be um, you'll have a much more non-toxic type of uh, nitrogen in your system right off the bat you'll have ammonium as opposed to ammonia uh, so your fish will be a little bit safer, your plants will be safer, your microbes will be a little bit safer. But you'll also have really pretty good efficiency when it comes to taking this and converting it to nitrates. Okay? So, um, this is something to do over time. This change might take a year. You know, it might take a year and a half. It's worth doing it very slowly, but over time, you can get there as your system matures. Uh, you'll end up with a very healthy system and if you're limiting the amount of nitrogen going in, if you're responding to your water tests, to the variables uh, that you see in your system, uh, then you'll have a great system. Alright, well that was the video on ammonia and ammonium. Hopefully you found it useful. We'll try and dig into a little more detail in the future. Um, get you something that's a little bit more uh, maybe academic or a little bit more technical um, and a little less off the cuff. But hopefully that made sense to you. And uh, if you enjoy our videos, if uh, they're useful to you, please subscribe. And uh, feel free to ask us any questions you may have. Um, also, we're going to be trying to put out some ebooks on a few of these different things to really dig into the details and let you know uh, what's going on with these different things inside of your systems. So make sure you check those out. All right, so this is our greenhouse here. We just came in through the front door, and this is kind of looking east um, down the rows and columns of uh, towers here. So come on in and I'll explain how everything works. So now we're at the far end of the greenhouse and you can see uh, some of the new towers that have just gone in uh, this last week and uh, some of the stuff that went in the week before over here.